How has selling a reality show evolved in the last 20 years? I think it's much the same as it ever was. A good idea is a good idea, but I also think that we're also way more reliant on importing existing concepts from other countries. You look at things like The Masked Singer, where an executive was literally in a restaurant having dinner and watching that show on television and went, oh, we should make that. That's different. I mean, we're, we're more exposed to formats from other places than we've ever been because people are looking for them. They're trying to find something that's already proven that they don't have to lose money on while they develop it. So that may be a little bit different. You see the rise of guys like Avi Armoza, who is one of my favorite people in the world. Um, he's just a really cool guy who packages formats uh, in Israel. That that's actually where you make most of your money because if you're producing television shows in Israel, it's a very middle class pursuit. It's not something that you really make a fortune doing. But you have certain examples. You know, there's a, a show called Couch Diaries that comes from there which is a great idea. You, you, just, you get a passport, you take somebody to the airport, you don't tell them where they're going, they find out when they get to the airport and they're going to a place that's going to help them overcome some issue they have in their life. Like there was a kid that was terrified of women and they sent him to a room with these three women around the same age as him. They took him out, showed him a good time, he had a great time and just was suddenly became more comfortable around them. They took a woman who was very sort of... Uh, mild mannered and very religious and very proper sent her someplace to live with a family that didn't observe the same religion that she did they got used to each other and had that experience that show has been sold in something like 15 or 20 territories the world over and the creator uh zippy rosenblum which is the greatest name you've ever heard in your life isn't it uh zippy rosenblum is now an executive i think with hachette so you know the idea that formats can be repackaged and resold all over the world uh, is kind of a neat thing, I think. It's a great way for creators in other places to get seen in the United States, which is no longer seen as the end-all, beat-all. Like, if it's not on American television, it doesn't exist, which is kind of how people used to think. Um, I guess I'll stop there. Do you have to be working inside reality television to sell a show? It's not unhelpful. Uh, I was in it for about eight years before I knew enough people that I felt like I could call somebody up and go. And that was even with an agency. I had a, a really decent agent and I just, I didn't, I didn't want to expose myself before I was ready and really knew the full deal on how you should be pitching. So I waited until I was ready. And it's much better to try to pitch after you have connections and you have titles. I got my agent after I worked, was working on the Osbournes. So I would start calling people and go, hi, it's Troy Duvall from over at the Osbournes. And they go, ooh, I don't know who you are, but I know the name of that show. It was very easy to get meetings. So a person sort of fresh here in LA with no connections, not working in the industry, but they have this amazing idea. Is that possible? They can actually- It is do not unheard of, but it is really hard. If you have talent attached, you know, if your brother-in-law is a quarterback for a football team and you think that he would be great as a subject of a show and he has said yes, Go for it. But it's very rarely done that somebody completely fresh to things gets something sold. You've got to bring something with you. You've got to figure out where your value is as a producer. If you've never done it before, there isn't anything that you bring to the actual production. So give yourself enough time to get acquainted with some people and make yourself bigger by associating with people that can pitch with you. I always pitch through an existing production company that has an existing relationship with whatever network I think is right for the show. And that's just easier for everybody because the credibility line is established. Who are the players involved in a show being sold? Well, you've got the production company, which you've got the people who do development uh, at those production companies. The people who have existing relationships with the network. It's network executives obviously have something to say, whoever's in development, uh, whoever's in programming and current series. Uh, those are the people that you want to get interested in the, in the work. How is selling a reality show different from selling a screenplay or a movie? A screenplay or a movie is more of a solitary thing coming out of the gate. Um, a movie is going to go through several iterations and you're probably going to be fired off the film and they'll bring on another writer who's established to complete that. If you have not read Tom Lennon and Baron, Ben Garrett's book uh, that's called 
uh, making movies for fun and profit and fun and profit is crossed out. So it's making movies for profit. Um, they detail that pretty well about how if you're the, if you're the writer that starts, you know, you'll get it sold. If it's a reality show, I mean, everything is super collaborative, but a reality show probably has more fingers in the fudge than almost anything because everybody thinks they can contribute to a reality program. Why do you think that is? Because it's perceived as something that's easier to do. Erroneously. But it's also, you know, I think people have more of an idea of how a reality show gets made than they do of how a film gets made. They assume that it's a, you know, just kind of this massive Beetle Bailey cloud of flying fists and action that somehow settles into a finished product. I think you've said never blindly email anyone mm -hmm. anything in the entertainment industry. Right. I would say that because uh, email is so immediate. It's like teleporting into somebody's living room in your underpants and wanting to have a conversation with them. Um, if you go through a channel or you meet them through someone that you know, uh, then it makes sense. If you're blindly emailing, people all day get unsolicited contact. And it also is a very amateurish way to move forward. If you're going to email somebody, uh, do it in a way where it's like, the, indicate that you know something about them and be asking them for advice as opposed to asking them for action on your behalf. Because when you write to someone and you say, I like a lot of the things that you do. I'm a little confused about the process. I'm trying to get started. I have this thing that I'm trying to move forward with. Don't attach any documents that they would have to read and expose themselves to the liability if somebody else is making a show similar to yours so that you and a lawyer stand up at some point and go, we should sue them because that's just like the thing we pitched that they never wanted to look at but I emailed to them. And on social media as well. So some certain so platforms are wonderful, but people can be very hypervigilant. Yeah, for heaven's sakes, don't talk about the thing you're trying to sell on social media. Oh, not only that, I'm sorry, I meant uh, in terms of trying to contact people blindly, yes. again, with an ask for them rather than right. something more. Could you read this for me? Sure. Nobody wants to read. I still, think, I still think every day about that thing that Josh Olson wrote years ago, that, that I don't want to read your fucking script. It's a, it's a great read. It's like I have a pile of stuff next to my bed from my friends that I need to read. I have things I have to write. I have things I have to do. I cannot stop and take the amount of time that it takes to read a screenplay to give somebody that I don't know advice. So that being said, because that's disheartening to hear, I realize that that is most people, they're inundated with Sure. The realities pitches. of this business are very hard to hear. That's true. Okay. But how do we, how do we overcome that in the sense of, uh, okay, if it's an unknown and they have several screenplays they'd like to have made, what are the proper channels? The proper channels are uh, to look for representation. Um, it's very hard to get anybody to read anything if it's not coming to them uh, through an agent. The old phrase, over, you know, over the transom, nobody reads things that just pop in through the window. It's not a subpoena. You don't tap somebody on the shoulder and they have to read it. Okay, so find representation. What sure. if they can't find that? You can use an entertainment attorney that has decent relationships with people to submit things. Um, it's a little more rare, and it's not going to be free. They're going to take a percentage of whatever you make off of that sale, just like an agent would, or ask you for an upfront fee. Um, you just have to be prepared for that. 